Welcome back. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa sent a cable of congratulations to the Emir of Qatar, His Highness Sheikh Tamim bin Hamad bin Khalifa Al Thani, on the occasion of the anniversary of his accession to the throne. His Majesty wished the Emir good health and happiness, and for Qatar and its people for their progress and prosperity under His Highness's wise leadership. His Majesty praised the bilateral brotherly relations and affirmed his keenness to continue developing these relations based on the strategic partnership between the two countries. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, the Supreme Commander of the Armed Forces, received a cable congratulations from the BDF Commander in Chief Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, in which he congratulated His Majesty the King in his name and on behalf of the BDF affiliates on the victory of the victorious team in the Royal Ascot race held in the UK and the Horse Isle of Jura's winning first place in the second round of the 2400 meter on grass race in the Hardwick Stakes within the second category. The BDF Commander in chief hailed the support and directors of His Majesty the King for all the achievements made by the kingdom during His Majesty's constructive reign. He wished His Majesty abundant health and happiness. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, the Supreme Commander of the Armed Forces, received a cable of congratulations from the BDF Commander in Chief Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, in which he congratulated His Majesty in his name and on behalf of all BDF members on the military golf team winning first and second place in the individual competitions for the senior category and third place in the team competitions in the 15th World Military Golf Championship in Zimbabwe. The BDF Commander in Chief hailed the support and wise directives of His Majesty the King, which resulted in making this achievement and adding that his Majesty's words supported them during championships and in making achievements. He pledged to his Majesty that all BDF members will remain loyal soldiers of his Majesty. His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, sent a cable of congratulations to the Emir of Qatar, His Highness Sheikh Tamim bin Hamad Al Thani, on the anniversary of His Highness's accession to the throne. His Royal Highness also sent two similar cables to the Deputy Emir of Qatar, His Highness Sheikh Abdullah bin Hamad Al Thani, and the Prime Minister and Minister of Foreign Affairs of Qatar, Sheikh Mohammed bin Abdul Rahman bin Jassim Al Thani. His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander of the Armed Forces and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa received a cable of congratulations from the BDF Commander-in-Chief Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa on the occasion of victorious team success at the Royal Ascot in the UK, in which the Horse Isle of Jura won first place in the second half of the 2,400 meters on grass of the Hardwick Stakes in the second category. His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander of the Armed Forces and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa received a cable of congratulations from the BDF Commander in Chief Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa on the military golf team winning first and second place in the individual competitions of the senior category of the World Military Golf Championship as well as winning third place in the team competition which was held in Zimbabwe. The Deputy Prime Minister Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa chaired the weekly cabinet meeting at Khadebiya Palace. The cabinet commended His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa's directives to reallocate the funds set for the celebration of the Silver Jubilee to charitable societies and funds through the Royal Humanitarian Foundation. The cabinet commended His Majesty's ongoing noble humanitarian initiatives to support efforts that promote solidarity, cooperation, and community partnership. The cabinet congratulated the pilgrims from Bahrain on their safe return, commended the Bahrain Hajj mission for facilitating the journey for citizens and residents. The cabinet also expresses gratitude to the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia for ensuring the utmost comfort and care for all pilgrims, including those from Bahrain, and congratulated Saudi Arabia's leadership, government, and people on the successful Hajj season. The Minister of uh, the Interior briefed the cabinet on the latest developments of the committee's efforts to review all causes of acquisition of uh, Bahraini citizenship since 2010, including ca cases of uh, fraud in obtaining the citizenship. The committee was formed following an investigation carried out by the Nationality, Passports and Residence Affairs on those who acquired Bahraini citizenship since 2010, which yielded information on some individuals that have provided inaccurate or forged documents to obtain citizenship, misuse citizenship or harm the kingdom's interests and community security in addition to those who
who violated the conditions of uh, the continuity of holding citizenship. The minister added that the committee continues to review and evaluate the cases in accordance with procedures. Additionally, the cabinet commended the efforts of uh, various government agencies in maintaining public security, safety and providing uh, services needed for citizens during the Eid al-Adha holiday. Following a report submitted by the Minister of Interior, the Cabinet reviewed the efforts to address uh, the fire that occurred in residential buildings and commercial stores in Manamasug. The Cabinet acknowledged uh, the professional response of the Civil Defense, the Ministry of Interior and other authorities in handling fire incidents, particularly the blaze at the Manamasug. To mark the upcoming World Drug Day, the Cabinet uh, commended the Ministry of Interior and relevant authorities for their efforts in combating drug use across the kingdom and for adopting initiatives to raise community awareness of its dangers. On the occasion of International Day of Women in Diplomacy, the Cabinet commended the wide-ranging achievements of Bahraini women in diplomacy and their contributions to the kingdom's extensive diplomatic endeavors. The Cabinet then agreed to amend the frequency of its meetings during July and August August to a bi-weekly schedule. The Cabinet then approved the following. A memorandum submitted by the Minister of Labour to develop mechanisms of implementing the midday outdoor work ban in 2024. A memorandum submitted by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs on the government's response to three proposals submitted by the Council of Representatives and a law submitted by the Shura Council. A memorandum submitted by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs regarding an NMOU between the Mohammed bin Barak Al Khalifa Academy for Diplomatic Studies at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and the Bulgarian Diplomatic Institute at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. A memorandum submitted by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs regarding three MOUs between Bahrain and Egypt across various fields. A memorandum submitted by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs regarding a cooperation agreement between Bahrain and Hungary. The agreement included uh, the provisions of the uh, Stipendium Hungaricum Scholarship and an MOU between uh, the Ministry of Education of Bahrain and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Trade of Hungary for cooperation within the Stipendium uh, Hungaricum program for 2024-2026. A memorandum submitted by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs regarding an MOU between the General Sports Authority and the Ministry of Sports and Tourism in Belarus to cooperate in the sports sector. And a memorandum submitted by the Minister of Cabinet Affairs and Chairman of the Board of Directors of the Education Training Quality Authority regarding the outcomes of the final national examinations for the 9th and 12th grades in 2024. The Cabinet then reviewed the following. A memorandum submitted by the Minister for Shura and Representatives Council Affairs regarding the agenda of the second regular session of the sixth legislative term. The Cabinet then took note of the following ministerial reports. The official visit of the Minister of Interior to France. The outcomes of participation in the 112th session of the International Labour Conference. And the participation of the third high-level international conference on international decades for action water for sustainable development. The Legislative Authority held a meeting with government representatives to determine the reason and justification for the Bahrain Flour Mills Company's decision to raise the prices of flour and its products and the impact on Bahraini citizens and families, livestock owners and other food products in light of the keenness on achieving food security in Bahrain. The meeting was shared by the Representatives Council Speaker Ahmed Lim the Shura Council Chairman Ali Saleh and the Minister of Parliament Affairs Ghanim al -Buainin. The meeting was also attended by the Minister of Transportation and Telecommunications, Mohamed al Kabi, and the Chairman of the Board of Directors of the Bahrain Flour Mills Company, Basim Asai. Al Msallam affirmed that achieving food security is a priority in national and, parla and uh, parliamentary work, and that food sufficiency requires the highest levels of cooperation and coordination to achieve aspirations and goals. The parliamentary proposal calls for postponing the decision for three months for further study and to find solutions and alternatives without compromising citizens' gains or harming their interests. For his part, the Shura Council uh, chairman stressed the importance of developing plans and systems that ensure the sustainability of fulfilling citizens' needs for main food products and the sustainability of the competency and capability of institutions and companies to fulfill these needs. He noted that uh, the Bahrain Flour Mills Company must take into account that citizens are not affected by the decision to adjust its product prices. 
The government uh, delegation noted that the price adjustment is for uncontrolled uh, subsidized flour products and it is necessary as a result of the global wheat price rise. The delegation affirmed uh, that the company is fully committed to maintaining business sustainability and that the price adjustment is necessary for the company's long-term sustainability and ability to provide Bahrain's flour needs. The delegation asserted the government's keenness on ensuring the stability of product prices and their availability locally and that relevant government institutions continue to monitor prices by intensifying campaigns to achieve consumer interests. The Deputy Chairman of the Supreme Judicial Council and President of the Court of Cassation, Sheikh Khalid bin Ali bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, received the Chairman of the Bahrain Bar Society, Salah Ahmed Al Midfa, and members of the Board of Directors of the Society. Sheikh Khalid bin Ali affirmed the partnership and continuous cooperation between the two sides to achieve justice and establish the rule of law. The meeting exchanged means in developing justice mechanisms, court procedures, legal professions, and legal training. The chairman of the Supreme Council of Health, Lieutenant General uh, Sheikh Dr. Mohammed bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, met with the Kuwaiti Minister of Health, Dr. Ahmed Al Awadi. The meeting was attended by the Minister of Health, Dr. Jail Hassan, the SCH chairman commended uh, the deep-rooted Bahraini-Kuwaiti ties and cooperation in various fields. The meeting discussed the means to further enhance cooperation in the health sector to improve health care services for citizens and residents. For his part, Dr. Lawadi underscored the strong historical ties between the two countries, praising the development and prosperity in Bahrain, particularly the high efficiency of its health care system. The Minister of uh, Health, Dr. Jayil Hassan, met with the Kuwaiti Minister of Health, Dr. Ahmed Lawali, and the accompanying delegation. The minister highlighted the long standing relations between Bahrain and Kuwait. She emphasized interest in further strengthening cooperation, particularly in health and advanced health technologies. For his part, Dr. Lawali commended the strong ties between Bahrain and Kuwait, affirming the keenness to expand cooperation in the health sector. Under the patronage of His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, the Chairman of the Supreme Council of Health, Lieutenant General Dr. Sheikh Mohammed bin Abdullah Al Khalifa attended the Arabian Gulf University graduation ceremony for the academic year 2023-2024 at the Exhibition World Bahrain. The SCH Chairman praised the active role played by the university in supplying the health system in the kingdom and the GCC with medical personnel as it has contributed since its founding in 1980 to the graduation of 3,500. 127 doctors. The Minister of Education and Chairman of the Board of Trustees of the Higher Education Council, Dr. Mohammed bin Barak Jum'a, delivered a speech in which he pointed out that the ceremony is an opportunity to recall the pioneering educational and health achievements made during the prosperous era of His Majesty the King. He also expressed thanks and appreciation to His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister for patronizing the uh, ceremony, which confirms His Royal Highness's interest in the educational process. For his part, the President of the Arabian Gulf University, Dr. Saad bin Saud al Fahd, extended his deepest thanks and gratitude to His Majesty the King and His Royal Highness for the great support they provide for the university. The ceremony witnessed a speech by the graduate of uh, the Arabian Gulf University, the Minister of Health of Kuwait, Dr. Ahmed, uh, Abd, uh, Dr. Ahmed Abdel Wahab Al Awali, during which he stressed uh, that the university is a symbol of the Gulf and Arab identity and a bridge linking the Gulf countries. After after that, the SCA chairman honored the outstanding students of the College of Graduate Studies and the students of the College of Medicine and Medical Sciences. Higher education in the Kingdom of Bahrain witnessed steady progress in terms of content, academic programs and educational patterns. More in this report. Higher education in the Kingdom of Bahrain is witnessing great development, which confirmed the feasibility of the plans followed, clear and systematic steps planned by the Kingdom, and the great progress witnessed in this regard. These continuous endeavors undertaken by the Higher Education Council have directly contributed to human development through its vital and important role in making national cadres and competencies keep pace with the latest modern educational methods and technologies that support creativity and innovation and enhance the role of scientific research in order to achieve the desired goals. Since the inception of university education in the Kingdom of Bahrain, 
and the commencement of implementing its strategies, the Kingdom has sought to provide high-quality higher education, enabling its graduates to compete locally, regionally and internationally, and to prepare an empowered generation that possesses the elements of modernity and development to meet the requirements of the labor market. Bahrain has created the appropriate educational climate within higher education institutions, in addition to positive cooperation with higher education institutions and brotherly and friendly countries. The Kingdom has made great strides in the field of development and modernization in general, and in higher education in particular, through the creation of new scientific specializations that keep pace with the best international systems and standards. The Kingdom continues to affirm its commitment to building human capital and arming them with science to be an effective contributors to the process of development and comprehensive renaissance under the leadership of His Majesty the King and the support of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. Within the framework of the historical fraternal relations between Bahrain and Iran and in regards to religion, neighborliness, common history and mutual interests, the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdel Latif Rashda Zayani and the Acting Minister of Foreign Affairs of Iran, Dr. Ali Bakri Khani, held a bilateral meeting in Tehran on the occasion of the visit of the Minister of Foreign Affairs to Iran at the invitation of the Iranian Minister to participate in the Asian Cooperation Dialogue meeting. The two parties agreed to establish the necessary mechanisms to begin uh, talks between the two countries regarding studying how to resume political relations between them. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdel Latif Rashda Zayani, participated in the Asian Cooperation Dialogue ACD ministerial meeting, which was held in Tehran. The meeting was chaired by the Acting Foreign Minister of Iran and the President of the meeting in its current session, Dr. Ali Bakri Khani. Dr. Zayani affirmed that the 33rd Arab Summit hosted by Bahrain in May conceded constructive results and decisions. These outcomes reaffirmed the commitment of Arab nations to achieve a just and lasting peace in the Middle East as well as their unwavering support for the Palestinian people's right to freedom, dignity and the establishment of their independent Palestinian state with full sovereignty. He said that the Arab Summit adopted a number of initiatives submitted by the Kingdom to support Palestinian rights and called for a UN-backed international peace conference to establish an independent Palestinian state, support international recognition and acceptance of a Palestine as a full UN member in addition to providing basic education and health care services to those affected by the conflicts. Dr. Zayani pointed out that Bahrain chaired the ACD meeting in 2021 to 2023 under the theme post-pandemic sustainable recovery where member states managed to overcome uh, the challenges imposed by the global pandemic. He expressed interest in the upcoming cooperation that would strengthen economic, commercial and investment exchange to meet the aspirations of the people of the member states uh, to peace, stability, prosperity and sustainable development. The minister said that it is crucial to provide a safe and stable environment free from conflicts, disputes and wars to achieve the aspired economic and cultural cooperation. He expressed his deep concern over the ongoing war in Gaza, which he described as a major challenge threatening regional and international security and stability. He described the situation in Gaza as a painful human tragedy that demands urgent attention from the international community to prevent further loss of innocent lives. Dr. Zayani affirmed the Kingdom's firm belief that a comprehensive and just peace in the Middle East is a strategic imperative for regional security, stability and prosperity, which would benefit all people. He emphasized it would create the secure environment necessary to achieve the ACD's goals the meeting discussed enhancing cooperation between member states in political, economic, commercial, cultural, tourism, educational, human resources, scientific and technological sectors, in addition to innovation, food and water security and energy, and comprehensive sustainable development. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdel Latif Rashid Ziyani, met in Tehran with the Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Foreign Affairs of Nepal, Narayan Kaji Shrista. On the sidelines of the Asian Cooperation Dialogue meeting, the two sides discussed bilateral relations and ways to develop bilateral cooperation in all fields to serve common interests, as well as discussing political and security developments in the region and the world and their repercussions on regional security and stability. 
The Minister of Foreign Affairs also met with the first Deputy Minister of Foreign Affairs of Uzbekistan, Dr. Bakhrumo John Aliyev. They discussed friendship ties between the two countries and means to enhance bilateral cooperation in various fields and activating the agreements concluded between the two countries to serve common interests in addition to exchanging views on issues of common interest. The Minister of Foreign Affairs also met at uh, the Iranian capital his Thai counterpart, Maris Sangiam Pongsa. The two sides discussed the friendship relations, the cooperation in various fields and the means of bolstering it to serve mutual interests. They also exchanged points of view towards current regional and international developments and their impact on regional security and stability. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Latif Rashid Zayani, praised the contribution of Bahraini women in the field of diplomacy, lauding their efforts in supporting the prominent role of the kingdom in spreading a culture of peace and supporting the goals of sustainable development under the wise leadership of His Majesty the King and the support of His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. On the occasion of International Day for Women in Diplomacy, the Minister extended congratulations and appreciation to His Majesty the King, His Royal Highness and Her Royal Highness, the President of the Supreme Council for Women. He stated that Bahrain is proud of the achievements of Bahraini women in the field of diplomacy since the 1970s and their role as active partners in decision making and the consolidation of peace, democracy and sustainable development at the national, regional and international levels. The Kingdom of Bahrain joins the world in celebrating International Day for Women in Diplomacy. More in this report. The outstanding contributions of women in the diplomatic field have been proven by their achievements, competence, merit, distinction, and the ability to actively participate in strengthening friendship ties and cooperation and establishing peace between countries and peoples. These contributions are celebrated by Bahrain every year on the International Day for Women in Diplomacy with the aim of educating and raising the public's awareness on women's diplomatic achievements. The Kingdom of Bahrain has supported women in various fields, especially the diplomatic sector, through national representation and enhancing cooperation, relations and trust between capitals, as these achievements came as a result of many initiatives, strategies and integrated efforts, most notably the establishment of the Supreme Council for Women and constructive cooperation between all ministries, government institutions and the private sector. The Bahraini experience in this field reflects policy enlightenment and inspires the world to increase women's participation in peace and political processes to achieve equality and development. The Kingdom of Bahrain won the bid to host the 93rd Global Association of the Exhibition Industry UFI Global Congress for the first time in the Kingdom. The UFI board voted in Bahrain's favor at the recent UFI European Conference 2024 held in Switzerland. The Minister of Tourism and Deputy CEO of Bahrain Tourism and Exhibitions Authority, Fatma Sayrafi, expressed pride in Bahrain's selection as the host destination for the UFI Global Congress. She affirmed that it is a testament to Bahrain's efforts to drive innovation in the promise sector. She noted Bahrain's welcoming of delegates from across the globe to experience Bahraini hospitality and many opportunities the nation has to offer. For his part, the president of the UFI, Geoff Dickinson, has expressed pleasure with Bahrain's hosting of the 2026 UFI Global Congress. He noted that Exhibition World Bahrain presents a very strong bid, making it an easy decision for the UFI. The Royal Endurance Team, represented by victorious Al Zahim and Al Rohud team, secured the top three positions in Samori International Endurance 160km race. The Royal Endurance Team continued its dominance in the European arena, preparing for participation in the World Championship scheduled in September in France. Al Rohud Team rider Mohamed Abd Samad Al Bastagi claimed first place after a strong competition, and victorious team rider. Sarhan Abdul Hamid Al Anzi secured second place, while Al Zaim team rider Manal Fakhrawi came in third. Team director Dr. Khalid Ahmed Hassan praised the significant support the team received from the representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs and captain of the Royal Endurance Team, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, which contributed to the team's achievements in the 160 kilometer race. He emphasized that this participation is crucial for the team prior to their 
participation in the World Championship scheduled for September in France. The winning riders were crowned at the Championship Village, where the event achieved a notable success in organization of all sp aspects with the committee, ensuring all needs were met for the riders and creating ideal atmospheres, which contributed to enhancing the competitiveness of the races. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs extended Bahrain sincere condolences and solidarity with Jordan over the deaths and injuries of several soldiers following an accident involving military trucks as part of a relief and humanitarian aid convoy en route to the Gaza Strip, wishing the injured a speedy recovery. The ministry expressed the sympathy and solidarity of Bahrain to Jordan, commending its efforts in supporting the Palestinians to confront the difficult humanitarian conditions in the Gaza Strip. The ministry reiterated Bahrain's call for concern Concerted international efforts to facilitate the safe and unimpeded delivery of a critical humanitarian aid to Gaza.